Hello! Earlier this week, Ralph Bacon presented us with a method to control two LEDs from a single GPIO pin on a microcontroller. And uh, he points out in his video, which I will link down below, why this can be a, quite a nice feature. If you only have one pin left, but you want to have a little more status information from an LED, especially on a microcontroller with just a few pins, this might be absolutely a good idea. So his solution to the problem is seen here. We have one uh, Arduino or general IO pin, general purpose IO pin on any microcontroller. And we have uh, two LEDs here actually connected in opposite directions. And in his solution, he presents another solution which is less good or worse actually, because we can uh, get other complications there. Um, he presents us with this solution where we have an N-channel MOSFET down here, a P-channel MOSFET up here. And depending on the state of the GPIO pin, either current can travel through the P-channel FAT and then down into the GPIO pin through the LED5 in this case, the lower LED. And the opposite state would be that the N-channel transistor is conducting because we have a logical one here. And then current can go through this LED down here through the N-channel MOSFET to ground. And so this arrangement with these two MOSFETs automatically switches between the two current paths, which is quite a nice feature. Uh, but you see that you need quite a lot of extra parts for just these two LEDs. So what I want to show you today is a another method which also needs external parts, but if you have actually more than two LEDs, you might uh, get around with fewer parts. And even if you just have a single double LED here, then you might need fewer parts, smaller parts than the other solution. So let's have a look and uh, see what I mean. So when we think of a GPIO pin, which can have uh, 0 and 1 as a logical output state or be disconnected as an output and function as an input, then we can actually connect two LEDs in a similar way that Ralph presented. So we use these anti-parallel configurations of LEDs. And uh, what then? Well, if we connect the other side of the two LEDs to half the operating voltage of our microcontroller, so if we connect this to VCC divided by 2, then we can actually get a control over which LED to turn on by just putting a 0 or 1 here. Let's have a look if we assume that on our GPIO pin we have a logic 1. That means that it is internally connected to VCC, to the positive supply voltage. And this means now that through our series resistor here, current can actually flow from the higher potential VCC, 5 volts typically on an Arduino system, to the lower potential of 2.5 volts in this case, through the upper LED. So this LED would turn on and emit light. If we, on the other hand, have the same arrangement here, but we output a logical zero, which would be connecting the same as connecting internally the GPIO pin to ground. So we have a zero here or zero volts or ground. And we have VCC divided by two 
on the other side, which is still 2.5 volts. Then in this configuration now, current can travel from the now higher potential through the lower LED and into the GPIO pin where it's synced to ground. So in this case, this LED here would turn on. The potential difference uh, is two and a half volts in both cases, which should be enough to even turn on a blue indicator LED if you're running your microcontroller, for example, an ESP8266 from with 3.3 volt uh, input output voltage, then actually uh, you might be limited to red LEDs or red and possibly yellow or green LEDs because you only have the ha half of 3.3 volts, which is 1.6 volts. It should still be enough for a green LED and for definitely for a red LED to turn on. You could also use a slightly asymmetric voltage here, which is in, let's say, one volt below the supply voltage and you have one volt for one LED and two volts for the other type of LEDs in the 3.3 volt system. So, but I, I was looking into this earlier and was restricting myself to five volt systems and I will show you how this looks practically. So here I have my small 80 mega tester. I use the 80 mega 328 as a microcontroller in two courses at the university. And it happens from time to time that due to some mishap, uh, some of the IO pins get fried. And you cannot see that from the outside of the package um, unless it's a broken off leg, which also happens from time to time. But more often actually because of some short circuiting or connecting the power supply slightly wrong, just one of the pins might be damaged internally and the chip otherwise behaves as it should. And then it could be quite tiring to find the problem on a microcontroller system when you don't know what is wrong and actually it is a microcontroller which is wrong. So I have this text tool. Actually, it's not a text tool. It's a TFX T-Dual um, Chinese clone of a text tool socket, a zero insertion force socket here. And I have on the sides these rows of LEDs. And these are dual color LEDs, like this one here, which means that in the same package we have an antiparallel uh, configuration, two LEDs. In the one polarity, um, in one polarity we have a green LED. And if I turn the LED around 180 degrees, then it's actually a red LED. These come also in different color combinations. Here I have a, a pair which is actually yellow. Yeah, come on. Yellow and green. The ones I have here are actually the same type as I had here. So they are green red LEDs. And what more do we have here? We have an operational amplifier here. Actually, it's a dual operational amplifier and I use it as a voltage follower because in order to get the half supply voltage, it is not just enough to connect two resistors between the supply voltage as a voltage or potential divider. Um, if we have equal resistors and we have plus VCC here, and we have ground down here, then this would give us VCC divided by two as the voltage drop over both of the resistors. But usually we cannot actually um, load this source, this voltage divider with a significant current draw. So what we can do is instead that we buffer up this voltage or this potential here 
by actually using a operational amplifier as a voltage follower. This is a particular useful circuit for an operational amplifier. It's a very simple circuit for an operational amplifier. We just tie the output back in, in a feedback to the inverting input. The operational amplifier will now try to maintain a zero voltage difference between the two inputs by changing its output level. And of course this zero volts is reached when the output voltage is the same as the input voltage on the non-inverting input. And the advantage now is that we can get um, up to about 100 milliamps from a typical operational amplifier, 20, 50, 100 milliamps, which is enough for a couple of LEDs. And the voltage here would be then VCC divided by 2. And since it's, this is a high impedance input, we can use quite high resistors. I'm not exactly sure what I used. Yes, I, I see I used 20 kilo ohms for both of these resistors. So this means that we have very little current going from the supply voltage permanently to ground through these two resistors. We have very few losses. The only current actually going is the current then to or from the LEDs. Also, when we actually have several of these LEDs connected to the same half supply voltage, then part of the current will be shared between the positive or high GPIO pins and low GPIO pins if they are at different states. So this actually is also uh, quite interesting and can lead to a different connection scheme of uh, several LEDs, which I will be covering in another video soon called Charlie Plexic. But let's get back to um, the practical implementation here. So we have the two voltage dividing resistors down here, 20 kilo ohms each. These are the current limiting resistors for the LEDs. On, these, on this side here we have 11 LEDs and on this side we have 12 for the in total 23 general purpose input output pins which you get out of a standard 80 mega 328. If you're not using Arduino, if you're using Arduino then it's a couple of less because some of them are internally not available. For example, because it's running out of a crystal oscillator, then you already lose two of the GPIO pins. So I will put this chip into the socket and put it in and you can actually see the red LED which is wandering around here indicating actually a one on these particular GPIO pins the green LEDs indicate a zero. So a broken pin would be seen as a non-lit LED. Let's simulate this by actually putting a sleeve over one of the GPIO pins here and trying to put it back into the socket. And now, well, I should have chosen the next pin, then it's more clear because that's an upper LED, like this, there, like this. So now we can actually see that this LED is off, and it's off both in the high and the low state. So when the red LED came by, the red dot came by, um, it wouldn't light up either. So this indicates that this pin is completely broken. Sometimes you get half broken pins, which can be just zeros or just ones. Um, I still keep these microcontrollers then and use them for non-critical projects of my own, where I don't need all the 23 input output pins, for example. 
So that's it for today and see you soon with two upcoming projects of mine.